How to become a male boudoir photographer. Male photographers ask me all the time how to move into the boudoir industry and show potential clients that they aren't going to be creepy. Well, as a longtime boudoir photographer who happens to be a dude, I am here to share all of that with you. And just to clarify, this is about how to be a photographer who's male, not necessarily someone who photographs men, which you can do either way. Um, but it's not like a photographer who focuses on male boudoir, but a photographer who is male, who focuses on boudoir. That's what this video is about. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd and I am a male boudoir photographer. I've been doing this full time as a boudoir photographer for seven years and shooting for five years before that. And I never wanted to be a boudoir photographer, which is why my first five years of business, I shot families, kids, high school seniors, couples. I don't do newborns, I don't do events. So no weddings, no corporate gigs. I have and I learned that I don't like them. Anyway, I never wanted to be a boudoir photographer because I heard too many horror stories from my female friends about creepy dudes with cameras, a guac, a G-U-A-C, a guy with a camera. I love guacamole, please don't associate those two. But that became the term, like dude with a camera who claimed to be a photographer and was just trying to hang out with girls in their underwear. That's what we're not going to be. And this is a video about how to not be that dude. And if you're like, I am so not that guy, how do I tell people? This is how. So number one, how to not be creepy. Two, how to create a safe environment. Number three, be mindful of your vocabulary. Number four, have a female present at all times. And number five, get out of your own head. That one's super duper important. Please do not cut out early and skip that one because I'm gonna get excuses on numbers one, two, three, and four that will all be washed out by number five. So stay with me. All right, number one, how to not be creepy. Firstly, you're here, so that's a really good first step. If you're like, I don't want to be that person, you're probably not that person already, uh, but there are other things that you can do to make sure you aren't perceived as that because it's about social calibration. It's making sure the energy that we give off is received a specific way and that others don't mistake our intentions and everything that we do. So if you don't wanna be creepy, you're, you're already in the right direction just by acknowledging that that is your intention. And by being really aware of your actions and how people respond to them, and really putting in the effort to make sure that the way that you communicate, whether it's in your marketing, it's your body language, it's everything, uh, is received a certain way. So point one is super short and simple, but it's the foundation to the rest of them. So number two, create a safe environment. This one, super important because boudoir is a very vulnerable genre of photography. You know, the way I describe it to my new clients is it's not about taking your clothes off to be sexy. It's about taking off your armor and facing who you are. And that to me is so, like, it's such a powerful image that my clients can put in their mind. And that alone already makes it like, oh, this isn't someone who's just trying to see me in my underwear. Uh, it's, it's an entirely different mindset already. And that's one of the ways that I approach it. I also don't advertise my work as being sexy photos. I want to help someone feel strong and confident, elegant, feminine. And those are the things that we bring out no matter what they're wearing. So by creating this safe environment, I've got a welcome sign out front with their name on it that I hand write before every client shows up. Whether it's a console, they're picking up their prints, it's the photo shoot, the reveal. Anytime someone comes into my studio, their name is handwritten on the welcome sign that hangs out front. And my clients love it because they take selfies in front of it and share it on Instagram and everywhere else. And they just, they already feel good before they even walk in. So super important. When they come in here, everything is clean, it's organized, things aren't trashy. They don't have to walk through a crowded apartment or home or anything uh, where they feel like this isn't a clean space dedicated for this. It feels like a well put together photo studio in here. And I've got a lot of feedback on that from other women. So I can, you know, make sure it feels good before my clients come in. I have a clean bathroom for my clients to use that is super important and a designated changing area where I don't go. Uh, my clients have their space to lay everything out. They can change. There's a full length mirror in there as well. Everything is super clean. We provide 
refreshments for them when they're here. And no one goes in that changing area unless invited. And by invited, I mean like my stylist may go in to help lace up a corset, but my stylist will be like, hey, I'm going to be out here. As soon as you're ready, you let me know. And then she can go in and do what she needs to do. So the camera never comes out when they're changing clothes. Uh, I'm never in that same room. Even sometimes clients who are like, I don't care. Like, can I just change right here? I'm like, you do you, but I prefer if you go to the change in area just because I'm moving lights, I'm moving furniture, and I just, I want them to have their own space no matter what. You know, I have parking. I turn lights on so they're not having to walk by themselves through a dark parking lot at night. You know, and in the wintertime, even if it's, you know, a five o'clock end time for our photo shoot, it's dark outside. I don't want someone to have to walk alone to their car at night through a parking lot. So it all the lights are on outside. They don't have very far to walk. And I'll walk out there with them just to make sure every step of the way, they're feeling totally safe. So if you're not sure about all the little things that you can do in your own business, go on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and just make a post and ask. Like, hey, you know, ladies, what do you look for when you go to a business that makes you feel safe or things that give you creepy vibes? And it doesn't have to be about photography at all. Uh, It could be anything from the way they greet people to the decor, the cleanliness, anything. Find out what people say, because a lot of times as men, we never think of those things. And, you know, we need that sort of feedback to provide the safe environment. And you'll figure things out as you go. So don't think that you have to get everything totally dialed in to get started. Like, yes, clean bathrooms, safe changing area, well lit everywhere. Start with the basics, you know, but there are little things that you can add in as you go to just really personalize the experience. Number three, and this one's super important. I mean, they're all really important, but this one, this one's huge. Be mindful of your vocabulary. As a male photographer, I am never going to refer to somebody's boobs or use slang terms to describe body parts. Never going to do it. I know some female photographers can say whatever they want and they may, that may be part of their brand and it's the way that they talk on their social media posts and on their website and that's great. Clients know what to expect before they ever arrive. That's the vibe this person gives off. I'm going to err on the side of caution. Also, it just feels gross to me to like talk to a stranger in this sort of environment with those kind of words. I don't even like using slang vocabulary uh, outside of the photo studio. That's me. So I'm going to say, you know, stick your booty back or, you know, elevate your rib cage as opposed to like stick your boobs out. I would never say that to somebody or any other verbiage like that. Elevate your rib cage. I recommend taking yoga classes or you can even watch yoga videos online, you know, go onto YouTube and watch them and listen to how the instructors tell you to do the different positions because they're going to use very, very safe language. And we can use that same verbiage, like elevate your rib cage. I got that from a yoga class. Yeah. Just err on the side of caution and always use safe language. You don't have to extend your glutamus backwards and elevate your pectoralis majoris. You don't have to use medical terms for the muscles. Bonus points if you know what I just said, but there are much friendlier ways, you know, think of this as you know, I'm assuming your grandma wasn't a sailor in the Navy, but if you were describing these things to your grandma, or if you're in an elementary school and you're telling kids to, you know, sit on your bum, things like that, that's the kind of verbiage that I would use with my clients here in the studio. Also, you can describe clothing when you are coordinating with a client. So I might say there's a hair stuck to the front of your bra. I will refer to the clothing item instead of the body part. Again, that's just a personal preference thing, but it makes it less about my client's body and more about the garment or the location of the hair. And then we can move forward because then it also doesn't seem like I'm staring at her boobs. And when you are essentially, I don't want to say checking out your client, but when I move somebody into a pose and I need to like look down their whole body to make sure everything is where it needs to be, I don't just like look down their body, I look at my camera and I will look at what they're doing in the back of my camera or through the viewfinder if you're holding your camera up, then it doesn't feel like your eyes are going up and down your client's body. You're posing somebody, which we have to look at their body. But again, when they see me staring up and down, I don't want to even entertain that vibe. Also, I know I'm not even talking about vocabulary anymore, but it's just how to make someone feel comfortable when you're in the room. I generally shoot with a 35 millimeter or a 50 millimeter lens. When I'm doing close-up shots, 
I bring out the 70 to 200 so I can get detail shots on their bra, on their undies or wherever. And I'm not getting up in my client's business to take that photo. And I'm still going to pose somebody in a full body pose and not tell them I'm zooming in on the strap of their underwear where it rides on their hip bone or, you know, where their lacy top uh, hits their collarbone or where their lacy top hits their collarbone, because then she's thinking just about that body part, and I don't want that. So use a zoom lens to get in closer. Don't go wide angle and like get up in your client's business. That will not help them feel more comfortable. Number four, and this is an absolute non-negotiable for me, have another female present at all times. So when I hired my hair and makeup artist, that's a requirement. We do hair and makeup, and she sticks around for the whole shoot. Not an option. A client can't request to have that otherwise. Uh, I do not ever want to be in the room alone with my client. Not an option at all. So it's fine because I love having an extra set of hands here. If my client's bra strap is twisted and she's already in a pose, my stylist will come over and adjust it. We have consent ahead of time. So when I put my client into the pose, like, is it cool if she adjusts your bra strap? Yes or no. If she says no, cool, do it herself. But she says, they all say yes, because we've already got the hair and makeup done. We've already been chatting for an hour and a half. We've already built that rapport. There's a comfort level there. I'm never going to lace up my client's corset or clip their garter belts. I know how to do it. I taught my styling team how to do these things. I am never going to do it on my own clients. I will never touch my clients. Um, anything that needs to happen, my female makeup artist will go and do the thing. Again, just as a male photographer, it is better for everyone that there's always another woman present in the room. And some of my clients ask, hey, is it cool if I bring someone else with me? I know this is a point of contention in the photography world. Some photographers say, if a photographer says no, don't work with them because that sounds sketchy. I don't want my clients to bring someone with them because they act differently on their own than they will with someone else in the room. Guaranteed. They can hang out during hair and makeup, but when the photo shoot starts, this is all about you. And I tell them, I have my stylist in the room the entire time, so she can support you any way that you need, but we want you in these photos not how you think you want to be in front of this other person because it always influences the photos and that's just not what I want. I know other photographers love having their friends present because they're going to see how much fun we're having and be a part of this whole thing and they're probably going to book their friend too. And you know, maybe if I had a bigger studio, I'd have a, a different experience with that, but I don't have a huge space. I'm only working with like three or 400 square feet here. So if I was in a 1500 square foot place and they weren't having to sit, you know, 12, 15 feet away, that would be a different conversation. Um, but working in small spaces, it's just so much easier to have the one person in the room to be their biggest fan, be someone that I already know and can work with. Also, I don't know if their friends are going to give well-intentioned feedback that, compromises the experience. And my client walks out of the dressing room and her friend says, mm, that doesn't look good on you or that's not your color or why'd you pick that? She might be thinking she's doing the client a favor by giving constructive feedback when really she just got into my client's head who now doesn't feel pretty even though she just stood in front of that full length mirror and hyped herself up to walk out in that outfit. So I know my stylist knows what to say and what's cool is my stylist ends up in my client's albums. So I take photos of, you know, when I put my client into a pose, my stylist will come over, adjust the hair. I'll take that photo while she's adjusting the hair or like pulling down the side of the dress or something. And I'd say, I don't know, 30, 40% of the time, those photos end up in my client's album because she said, and I get this feedback all the time. I had someone follow me around for three hours to make sure I felt pretty. I never experienced that, and I want to remember that as part of this, this experience. So I know it's working, which is pretty cool. And my stylists feel really cool every time I tell them, because I tell them every single time, oh, hey, remember so-and-so's shoot? Yeah, you're in her album in two different photos. And they feel appreciative, like their work makes a difference because it does. So there's a lot that you can do with that by having another woman present in the room as your assistant. And number five, like I said, this one, incredibly important. Again, they're all incredibly important, but number five ties them all together. Get out of your own head. Uh, yes, some people will not hire you because you're a male photographer. And some people will hire you because you're a male photographer. There is so much business out there for all of us. You don't have to worry about the ones you're missing out on because you identify as male. You don't. There's, there's so many people for us to photograph. Don't worry about it. 
Again, some people will not hire you because you're a dude. Cool. Focus on all the ones who will or who just don't care. It's that easy. Get out of your own head. If you are making the effort to not be creepy, if you're making the effort to be mindful and to provide a safe experience, a positive experience, an uplifting experience, and you're constantly working and improving on that and, and letting it be known, you know, make that again, make it part of your brand. Say, Hey, what do you look for in a business that makes you feel safe as a female client? Like put that on your business's page. Like I want to make sure that everything I do is as accommodating as possible. And people are going to love that feedback. And, you know, it's great marketing, but also you're building a better customer experience and it, it shows that you care. So get out of your own head. Don't worry that you're a dude because you're going to miss out on some work. You're going to make so much more money focusing on the ones who don't care or that prefer a male photographer. Don't have to worry about it. So those are my five tips for breaking into the boudoir world as a male photographer. Number one, don't be creepy. Number two, create a safe environment. Number three, be mindful of your vocabulary. Number four, always have a female present to assist you. And number five, get out of your own head. You know what? There's a sixth one. I think one that's really, really going to help no matter where you are in your photography journey, subscribe to this account. I'm pointing down with both hands because I don't know where the button is going to be. So I'm just gesturing broadly to anywhere the subscribe button may be. But that is absolutely going to help you provide a better experience for your clients so you don't miss any of these videos. I also recommend checking out how to start a boudoir photography business. That video is killer. And if you're like, you know what, Mike? I just want to start making boatloads of money like you do, and I don't want to wait very long. How do I get on this right now? Well, I'm glad you asked. Head to boudoirguild.com and check out the six courses I have available, or you can buy the bundle of all of them for the price of five of them, because you're amazing and you're making smart business choices. I hope you've learned a ton here. You may want to go back and rewatch this one and take extra notes, and let me know how your experiment went when you made those social posts to ask about building a good experience for your female clients. I'd love to know the kind of feedback you got. So let me know in the comments down below. You are amazing. See you inside.